I mean, this is the finest venue in Europe, uh, the Great Hall of Edinburgh Castle, the defender of the nation. Uh, and what we have is the Brave at Heart Awards, where we've got true defenders of the nation. That's ordinary people who've done extraordinary things, either from our uniform services or blue light services, or members of the public nominated by the blue light services. Uh, and these stories are heartwarming and awe-inspiring. And of course, there are people who, often without any notice, uh, were challenged in a split second. And the key thing about them is they all reacted as all of us would like to react in these circumstances. The difference, of course, is that they did it. So the reason it's the most important ceremony at Edinburgh Castle is for our uniform services, for our blue light services, uh, and for ordinary members of the public. These are all extraordinary people who have been acknowledged this evening. We're just walking down from Street Inn and Moanhead and um all of a sudden we hear this noise and we're loads of commotion and we're like, well, what's going on? So we, we start to walk down a bit quicker than we normally were and then we come across this man just lying on the ground, those people crowding around him, like people on the phone to ambulances and we're like, so we're like, right, everybody just calm down, we'll get, we'll try and deal with it and I was like, okay, I'll go and we'll see, cheat the person on the road first. We sustained that he was, uh, he was conscious, he was breathing, he was able to talk to us um, we got held him in the spinal position because we don't know any injuries because we hadn't given him a head to toe yet. And I was like, I'll go make sure the driver is okay because obviously the car was involved, there's a family in the car. Um, the driver was fine, the kids were fine, a bit shaken, but they were okay to be left on their own. And there's this one woman who was persistent, turn him onto his left side, he'll be fine. Done first aid years ago. Like, yeah, first aid's changed. If you turn him, he's possibly to could fracture his neck or whatever. Don't know what his injuries are, and then once the paramedics came in, they came in and took over, and then we were told just to head off because we'd done what we needed to do. There was a fire at a neighbour neighbour's house. Um, it was my mum that actually noticed it. Uh, I was in my back garden uh, with my dogs, and my it was my mum um, shouted to me and alerted me to it. So I jumped the the few fences to get to the woman's house, and she was in the house. Uh, the house was on fire. The kitchen was on fire. So um, we were luckily enough, we were just at the back door anyway. So I managed to get the lady to the back door and um, found a, a coat, a coat lying out the back. It had been outside for a, a bit of time. Eh? So I put that over the fire and I managed to lift the, the, the pan, the chip pan, and take it out the back. Um, there wasn't a lot, of, a lot of flames coming out the back door. It was just a lot of smoke, so I didn't really know what I was getting into, but there was, uh, it, it, was, it wasn't until I was at the fire that I could see it was fire rather than because it was just that thick smoke. I was walking along the Dean's Bridge and a woman had pulled up onto the curb and at first I just thought she'd broken down but um, she kind of got out of the car and started pacing around the car and again I wasn't sure because it's only a two lane traffic like laneway I just thought maybe she was trying to get out of the way and after a bit of pacing she started to climb up over the bridge and managed to get herself over um, and at that point I kind of just dropped everything and ran over and grabbed her around the collar and tried to calm her down and but yeah it was yeah it, it ended up taking seven of us like uh, there was a man down the road but it took him a couple of minutes to kind of get to us it felt like a long time actually um, it took seven of us to get her back over just because the Dean's Bridge has those big iron spikes so it was quite painful trying to hold her no I wasn't concerned about my own safety I was more concerned about actually seeing her jump over I guess and also I just thought maybe she wasn't making the best decision at that time so I basically just wanted to make sure that we both ended up safe. I was nominated for an incident where Emil um, jumped off a bridge whilst I was holding onto his hand. Um, he then went over the other side and he struggled so I stood up on a ledge and leaned over and with the help of my colleagues we've all pulled him back over to safety. Uh, these are all extraordinary people. I think we acknowledge 24 people tonight could have been a lot more. I mean, I, I suspect everyone who was nominated was worthy of an award. But decisions have to be made, and, and the stories are, are genuinely heartwarming. Uh, and they, uh, they are what we would like to think we would do if we were in these circumstances, but don't quite know if we'd be up to it. What we know about these 24 people is every single one of them is up to it, and I credit to Scotland.